Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2026 mod career mode. This is part number eight today for the Portuguese Grand Prix. If you guys did miss the previous one at the Austrian Grand Prix, then I implore you to go check that out because that may be the craziest episode we have had so far on this game. We had a mental sprint race, which made the episode alone, where we then had a fantastic Grand Prix, but in this sprint race, it was quite something. With two laps to go, we were one of, well, the only car at that point to pit for intermediates. We went from 19th place, and with everyone else on dry tyres, we sliced through nine cars in one acceleration zone. Then we sliced through a bunch of other cars to eventually climb up to not only a podium spot, points positions, a podium spot, we went even more because we climbed up and overtook Oscar Piastri around the outside at this point. Everyone struggling, sliding around. We got Liam Lawson in second place there and up ahead was our teammate Pierre Gasly. Yep, that's right. We went from 19th place to first place in less than a lap. The only car on intermediates at that point to win the sprint. And, spoiler alert, we went on to then win the full Grand Prix from that inherited pole position because of the sprint result. A fantastic episode, unprecedented episode really in terms of what it meant for the championship for this season because for the first time in absolute years on the F1 game period, we got three wins in a row and also the fastest lap as well. Really, really good spot we're in in this season but also says a lot about how the start of the season went that we won three races in a row and we're only now just in the lead of the championship by only a couple of points really. So yeah, we had so much making up to do after the Endring Gremlins at the start of the season. Going into the Portuguese Grand Prix, things staying quite stable, although there is an upgrade there for Aston Martin, I think that is, I can see, who get ahead of uh, Mercedes. And then the biggest upgrade is from the Audi Sport Works team. Look at that upgrade. That must be at least two ultimate upgrades, maybe even another major and minors thrown in there. Massive progress from one of the newest brands here on the grid in Formula 1. Audi as close as they ever have been as a team they're obviously formerly known as Sauber formerly known as Alfa Romeo closest they've been to the top pack to the likes of let's say Ferrari and Alpine there so expecting some exciting things from here on out for Audi maybe not straight away like you know immediately you know ruffling the feathers but from this position for the rest of the season, you know, if they make even further upgrades, they really could start to get into the points consistently, which would be quite a big deal for them as they've only scored, I think, one or two so far after some of the mental races we've had so far this season. But we go into Saturday lane qualifying here at Portimao. This has been a happy hunting ground for us on this game. We've had a, a few instances where we've had to play it very smart and pit, you know, when others don't under safety cars and make it through, you know, tire wear is a massive thing. Speaking about being smart though, you may see I'm having to change two components, the gearbox and ICE, in the middle of Q1 because someone right here wasn't very smart. I forgot to change those over from practice into quali. So we lose 13 minutes of this session and now we're under pressure. We've got it all to do. Two minutes left. We fueled up for two consecutive laps and this has to be good enough to get us through into Q2. Traffic though coming out the pits including our teammate who doesn't get out the way of the racing line and we try to avoid him we take too much curb and break our underfloor and spin into the gravel but what on earth was Pierre Gasly doing our teammate he just he just keeps going on the racing line like we're not even there. Surely he's been told your teammate's coming along. We try to not hit him and make contact with him. Ironically, taking avoiding action on him meant I made contact with that massive sausage curb and span out right in front of him into the gravel trap. It seems like he's just going along thinking, what on earth just happened behind me? No one's told him on our team to get out of the way or he's decided not to get out of the way and he's just kept on going on his uh, outlap there. Absolutely horrendous stuff. Uh, we've got gravel on the tyres. Thankfully, we, we do have time to carry on, but now I need to try and get these tyres cleaned up. And more importantly, I did pick up some floor damage on that first attempted lap. So we crossed the line for a second lap. We fueled up enough 
for a second lap. I wanted to do two consecutive quick laps, to be honest, because uh, going off previous seasons, that's definitely the vibe here at Portimao is kind of building up for a second lap. The tyres hold on and uh, you burn down the fuel a bit more by that second lap. But now with uh, understeer for most of the lap, really, with the underfloor damage as we come through the final bend, the, the, the top right delta is pretty much useless at telling us where we're going to be across the line. And what is it going to be? Is it going to be enough to get into Q2? No. No. Wow. And Gasly's P1. Fantastic. Of course he is. Of course he is. Brilliant. So far in on you know, in this game, on this series, we've had no issues with Pierre Gasly. In fact, we worked so well as a team last season so far this year. But this is the first sign of kind of just annoyance, really. I don't know what he was doing. He should have got out of the way. Um, and instead, we, we've had to uh, take avoiding action and spin ourselves into the gravel. Uh, that was obviously my mistake of going on so much on the curb, but it's because I was trying to avoid contact with Gasly. And so it's even more frustrating that the man I was trying to avoid in all of this goes P1 and we are out of Q1. That is such an, a frustrating thing, especially after our three wins in a row. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen in the race. We could still, well, you know, come back through to make it four wins in a row, but it's going to be so much harder now. Because we're P18, though, we are going to take this opportunity to take a whole column of engine penalties, fresh components, we may as well, and start from stone dead last. But three wins on the bounce to now starting last place for the Portuguese Grand Prix. This is certainly going to take a lot to make it four in a row. Let's go to the grid for the Grand Prix. <laughs> It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Oscar Piastri lines up on pole position and Liam Lawson completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Gasly, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Albon, Sonoda, Mick Schumacher, Verstappen, Leclerc, Ocon, Sainz, Russell, Theo Porcher, Drogovic, Bottas, Perez, Joe, Holkenberg, Sargent, Ricardo, and the owner driver rounds off the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. So in the end in Q3 that I wasn't in, it was all McLaren on the front row, Gasly on the second row though, so still did very solid showing the car has pace still around this circuit, but maybe McLaren are looking ominously that much quicker to lock out that front row. For us, we're at the very other end of the spectrum, down in last place, along with Daniel Ricciardo, who has also taken a penalty here for this Portuguese Grand Prix. A little bit cloudy, but I don't believe there's any rain forecast. It is going to be a completely dry race. Uh, most of us, most of us are on the, me uh, on the soft tyre. One driver on the mediums, which I think is Oscar Piastri. So... Most of us already maybe lining up that two stop that we've had to uh, do around this circuit because we know the tire wear is very, very high. Sometimes some late pit stops for AI who try and make the one stop work, but just can't. Either way, I think it'll be another interesting one in terms of that tire battle. And hopefully for us, we can slice our way through the pack as we go to five red lights to the Portuguese Grand Prix from last place. And there's an absolute howler of a start for Joe Guan Yu, Hulkenberg, so many drivers not getting off the line, maybe uh, with the overcast conditions a bit colder on the track temperature and it's a little bit of a chaotic well, turn one having to check for damage as we make a little bit of a love tap contact with several drivers three wide on the inside of us as the Andretti of Sargent overtakes the Williams of Hulkenberg but we managed to get up into 18th place checking the vehicle condition don't think there's any damage there thankfully my uh, engineers told me about so far as we climb back up to our original qualifying position of P18 and now get down the inside of the first Alfa Romeo Haas of the day up to P17 poor chair ahead of us in the improved Audi but he hasn't made the most of it but let's look at the replay because I believe it was a very good start for our teammate Pierre Gasser yes what a getaway what a getaway for the Frenchman and he's up into first place so Gasly leads the way for our 
our team here at the Portuguese Grand Prix. Behind him, the two McLaren squabbling. It's Liam Lawson ahead of Piastri, who, no surprise, struggling for grip on the mediums versus the soft tyre runners around him. Fernando Alonso nipping at the heels that was on the opening lap of Piastri, but has to remain down in fourth place. Gasly leading the two McLarens. Lawson then up to second, the lead McLaren, as we are going to make swift work of Teo Porcher in the Audi Sport car. Much improved this episode, but at least in the hands of Porcher, not showing it as much, but that's to be maybe expected. You know, his more senior teammate, Carlos Sainz, dragging that car up into what is a top 10 at the moment, I think. So, uh, yeah, maybe more uh, to see from them as we go on through this race or through this season as we now try and build up and overtake Bottas and Sergio Perez in one move. A little bit sketchy with Perez moving about. Wasn't too sure where he was going to go. We cut through the middle of them. A little bit of a warning for collision with Perez as we bang tyres, I think that was. But we're up into P14, so steady progress. Not lightning progress, though, you must say. And and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you have a bit more pace later in the race. But Gasly on that four is a sitting duck now as DRS is available. And Lawson is going to go round the outside. The New Zealander up into first place of this Grand Prix. And Piastri close behind. Is this maybe the beginning of the end for Gasly and for our team? Because like I said, we, we haven't been cutting through this traffic so rapidly as much as I'd want to. And even though Gasly had such a great start, now his actual race pace is a bit slower, easily overtaken by Lawson, and Piastri is all over him. Let's see how it goes through the laps, but I have a feeling maybe our car is not looking as great in race conditions around this circuit as it has done in the last three episodes. As a confirmation there, Carlos Sainz is in the top 10 just about ahead of Schumacher, Leclerc, Ocon, and there we are in P14 looking to try and maybe close up these four positions, but on lap four on to five, it's going to be pretty much a carbon copy. Uh, this looks pretty familiar. Deja vu here as Pierre Gasly gets overtaken by Oscar Piastri now on the outside and Gasly all of a sudden is down to third place as Daniel Ricciardo is out of this Grand Prix having taken those penalties for engine components he still manages to retire out of this race so that's a bit of a shambles for Albin and we close up to his teammate Ocon and Leclerc going to make a move on the man from Monaco on the inside catch him napping a little bit he's too focused on Ocon and we get up into P13 but yeah Gasly's going backwards we're not making amazing quick progress through the field. I just think our car this season is not working as well as it has done around Portimao in previous seasons or, you know, this season, you know, the previous three episodes because, wow, well, very easily, Alonso passes Gasly. What is going on? This car doesn't have that much pace. I mean, I'm overtaking cars because we are fighting much slower ones. But Gasly versus our rivals of McLaren and Red Bull Ford so far this season, absolutely getting flattened out there as we have to really send it even though on Ocon and really squeeze him out to make that pass happen up to P12. Maybe it's the soft tyre. Maybe it's just this tyre because... You know, the tyre is already kicking in, I can feel. I did want to maybe pit after that little slide there. Um, but I feel like we can maybe overtake Schumacher and then come in more towards lap 10. Because that would be ideal. Because then going onto the hard tyre, as I've planned, just opens up the strategy a little bit more to see what's going on in the race. See what we can do. But also it just means we're, we're doing less laps on, on one tyre later on. Because lap 7, 6 would be very early indeed for a pit stop off the soft compound. But... Gasly at the moment in a Red Bull sandwich. Norris, you know, within half a second of him. So maybe soon enough, Gasly might be P5. And that will really solidify uh, my notion of our car just not being great around here as we now focus in on one of the Ferraris. Max Verstappen, one of the stars uh, of the show last episode, was doing so well in the sprint in Austria. Uh, got a little bit unlucky with the red flag in the full Grand Prix. But here he overtakes Russell with ease to get up into P7. I think that was uh, in, the, in the Ferrari, in the other Ferrari. Unfortunately for him, is a little bit slower and he's going to get overtaken by us on lap nine. And as I overtake him, very good timing. Look at the bottom right. That tyre icon became orange as soon as I overtook him pretty much. And that's my indicator to come in for the pit stop. Uh, as we've said many times here at Portimao, it's all about committing early, co committing early to that, uh, that two stop because then you're going to actually gain that advantage with the undercut, with the enough laps on the pressure compound of tyres. So that's what we're doing onto a set of hard tyres, of course, because we know how good this car is on the hards. But you know what? It also opens up a okay, possibility of a one-stop. Because remember, last season, I think even the season before, the race winners have actually been 
the drivers that maybe make that one stop work, you know, and pull off a miracle. You know, Mick Schumacher, the guy we just overtook there in the Ferrari, he won this race last season in the Mercedes car, making a one stop work miraculously. So, you know, you never know. It might be a vibe for us. It gives us, give, gives us that option, basically, by going onto that tie. But right now, Piastri is leading the way then. We've missed the overtake, but it's no surprise. He's on the mediums, and at this point in the race, the soft tyres are probably feeling it. So he's the only medium tyre runner, I think, in the top flight. So he leads the way then. Lawson, Alonso, Norris, Gasly, uh, and the rest of them all should probably be pitting soon as Gasly has a bit of a slide there. Um, so Piastri will be the odd one out. That'll be interesting to see where he comes out once he makes his pit stop, you know, having done a medium tyre first rather than second or, or not at all, really, because I feel like maybe the vibe might be going from soft to hards and then going to softs again, as we've done previously. But I'm sure some of these teams will be going on mediums for that second stint. But for us, as the, as the My Team car, we know the medium tyre is just not the vibe as we now catch up to Joe Guan Yu setting the fast after the Grand Prix on hards, just showing the pace we have we're now at the back of the order but we're making our way through a little bit of an iffy uh, first turn there though took way too much curb and that invites Joe to come back at us in the Gulf Williams car Gasly has pit now onto mediums though oh Gasly why why Gasly what I just spoke about the medium on this on this team and even he knows it Gasly's faced how bad that medium has been on our car before in the season he's never going to learn unfortunately being an AI car as we go to the inside of Hulkenberg a little bit of a lift needed to make sure we don't make any contact with the German as we climb up to P17 it'll be 16 is Perez in the pit Schumacher Leclerc they've been uh, undercut and also maybe Verstappen no not quite into turn one the Dutchman stays ahead we're all over him trying to maybe look for a move on the inside but nothing comes of it and unfortunately the Ferrari stays ahead of us but we very much jumped all those guys uh, ahead of us in terms of like the time we had to them because Schumacher now is seven seconds behind us we had only just over taken him when we made our pit stop showing the power of the undercut the early undercut for this two stop around Portimao's. Lawson is ahead of Gasly still but he's being held up by Dragovic so that might bring Gasly back into play with uh, with Lawson but Piastri continues on on those original mediums he started the race on as Alonso's in no, no shock horror but what is a shock oh god what on earth a Red Bull for doing Lando's in as well. Red Bull are doing a double stack. I've never actually seen an AI team choose to do a double stack. Obviously, we've done double stacks before because annoyingly you can't tell your teammate not to pit on a certain lap when you're pitting but this team has chosen to do a double stack there Lando's lost so much time it's a red ball forward howler uh, to be honest so uh, Piastri leads from Ocon yet to pit Alonso comes out just just behind Gasly Gasly really gets aggressive to finish that move as they were side by side at turn one so it's Lawson up to third, Gasly fourth, and Lando, well, he's come out behind us. He's come out behind, he's come out behind someone who started last in this race. That's how bad that double stack went for them. And uh, Carlos Sainz actually has managed to get a great uh, undercut going because he's leapfrogged Russell, Sonoda, and Schumacher, because I think he was behind all of them. Oh, no, he was, uh, he was ahead of Schumacher, but he's, he's definitely jumped Russell to Noda. So, uh, Carlos Sainz and Audi looking pretty good there, having jumped two cars quicker than them uh, right now in the race. But, uh, yeah, ahead of us then, Albon, Verstappen, Alonso, Gasly, Lawson a bit further ahead, three seconds up the road. Ocon yet to pit, and Piastri yet to pit. Still goes on as we get towards halfway point of this race, and Piastri still leading the way. Ocon's pit at this point in time, and and now you're watching Norris overtaking me. We saw in the first stint the Red Bulls were quicker than Gasly. And here on the medium compound versus hards. Oh no, Mick Schumacher's out. Oh no, Schumacher's out for a second time in a row for Ferrari. That is very frustrating for him. The man who won this race last season is out. As we just about managed to defend Lando. But I was, uh, uh, I was saying before I was interrupted by that uh, Schumacher message. Yeah, the Red Bulls were quicker than us. So I'm trying my hardest to hold up Lando but he does have a quicker compound no matter how good I feel on the hards we're really having to give Lando a good fight as we squeeze him to the left hand side he does not budge he keeps his racing line we've tried this switch back from right to left to try 
and get the better exit to go round the outside. But we have to leave some room for our fellow compatriot. And Lando's just got that bit better grip on the mediums. And of course, I've been on these hard tyres a lot longer than he has been on those mediums. So I'm also facing my own tyre at this point. So we, we can't put up much more of a fight than that. And Norris overtakes us as Piastri is finally in on lap 18. A long old stint that was there for the Australians. So his teammate will uh, resume the race lead then at this point. Piastri, where is he going to come out though in relation to Fernando Alonso? Alonso's through. Alonso's up into second. Piastri's even behind Gasly. So although he went longer, you know, kind of, it kind of hasn't worked because he's come out behind a lot of cars he wasn't uh, behind initially, but he's on the soft compound. So Piastri's definitely doing a two stop today. So some of these guys on mediums, maybe they try a one-stop, I don't know. But Piastri's definitely doing a two-stop. And so because of that, he has to get a real move on on these soft tyres as he overtakes Gasly very quickly on lap 19 to get up into third place. So although he's lost some time, uh, theoretically, going longer in the race on mediums, he's going to be rapid. So he's already passed Gasly. He's probably going to very rapidly close up to Alonso. But at the moment for us, lap 19, I'm under pressure from the Audi. This is incredible. Lamborghini versus is Audi, two of the newer brands in Formula 1 going at it and Carlos Sainz for the first time in a while is really having a go at us and we're having to really fight this one because my media, my hard tyres are really wearing at this point and they don't actually feel that great. I'm going to say that right now. They actually feel very bad. I don't know if that's just because of the tyre wear or what but at the moment yeah, I'm not really feeling as confident as I have been in previous seasons of Portimao of making this aggressive two-stop work because... The pace isn't really there. The Audi's overtaken me. And actually, you know what? I was checking the tyre temperatures through the laps here. The first time I've seen this, I don't know if this is something I did too extreme with this setup, but my front tyres, usually they overheat in a maxed out car. My front tyres, they're cold. They're not getting temperature. It's real Jensen Button vibes here today for me. I can't get temperature into these front tyres. Um, and so the front end isn't as responsive, but what is responsive is this amazing Lamborghini engine of ours versus the Audi engine. We're able to overtake signs from, what was that, like six, seven tenths back? We caught him, so that's how good our straight line speed is. But yeah, in the corners, I've got no grip. I can't get some bite into the front tyres. Very peculiar. I wonder if Gasly's feeling the same thing, and that's why he's falling away as oh, Alonso squeezing Piastri a little bit. But uh, the McLaren makes it a 1-2 for the Papaya team once again and might just go chasing after Liam Lawson. But lap 28, we're into the last stage of the Grand Prix at this point maybe people start pitting for that second pit stop as Lando Norris now going for a move on Verstappen so we absolutely didn't have the pace to defend him because he's gone and chased after and caught the Dutchman but the Ferrari's going to come back at him Verstappen is still there on the inside this is amazing racing between remember the two former Red Bull teammates from last season so a little bit of an ego fight this might be for pride and Lando Norris comes out on top in P6 Verstappen down to P7 as on lap 20 and on to 29. Gasly comes in for that second stop off the medium tyres. We're going to overtake him. And at this point, because my pace is so poor, and I just don't think this car is actually very good around here, I'm actually thinking we just take this long onto a one-stop as Lawson does come in and Piastri comes in. The two McLarens have just done what the Red Bulls have, uh, did, did earlier. Alonso threw into the lead. He goes on. Is he going to go all the way? I don't know. But the McLarens are bailing for that two-stop with uh, about three laps to go. Oh, this is painful. Piastri has to sit behind Lawson. What is, what is up with that? I've never seen two different AI teams choose to double stack. It's so illogical to me. So Red Bull double stacked earlier and they've actually ended up 1-3 now. But the two McLarens double stack and Piastri is going to be out of the points nearly. Lawson down to P7. We're up to P4 ahead of, uh, our, of our teammate, ahead of Piastri. And with only four laps to go, including the one we're on, I actually think we just firm it. We just firm it and we go to the end on the hard tyres. And you know what? If Alonso, Albon and Norris pit, I'm into first place. So let's try it. We're on the hard compound, so we may as well compared to these medium tyres. Like, surely they're going to go off. But I say that. Science actually makes a move on me. And again, kind of underpinning how much better he and others are looking around this circuit this season compared to our car. As we're really having to scrap him. We're going to give him some room, though, because I don't want to make contact on that double right-hander. And of course, if I'm going to take first place from the two Red Bulls and Albon... 
it's all, you know, I need to have a clean car. I need to have a car that's not damaged as we try and re overtake Science on the inside. Oh, no, he comes across us. We have to have a tank slapper. Opposite lock. Thankfully, no damage on the front wing, but Carlos Sainz just cut across us. Uh, ironically, after all of that fighting on that 31, he's pit, he's pit, and Lawson now is coming through, having made that second stop. He's coming through for the overtake on fresh soft tyres. I'm trying to fight it as much as I can, but he's on fresh softs. Can I really afford to fight this as much as this? I mean, I re overtake him, which is pretty damn decent, actually, so I'm doing a good job at holding up these cars, but look at the traction. Oh my god, look at that traction. Lawson. That traction was a joke, man. He was so far back and he just got the traction up the hill and now sends it to the inside for P4. But at this stage, we're down to P5, but I reckon we can maybe, you know, Sonoda being behind us is going to aid, aid us because I think he's going to be a nice little mobile chicane versus Gasly Piastri as well. I reckon we could still get maybe P5 here, but Alonso, Albon and Norris, I want to kind of focus on them maybe because they're still going. I think they're going to the end. I think they are. It's unless they make a really last minute embarrassing pit stop on like lap 32 or lap 33. I think they're going to the end. The Red Bull Fords are trying the one stop on mediums from soft to medium, remember, as Gasly does get held up by Sonoda. What did I say? Sonoda was going to be our mobile chicane and he very much is as he holds up Gasly and Piastri. But yeah, look at this. Norris on medium, still going. Albon still on mediums going and Alonso still on mediums and going and there's only a lap left now by the time they get to the end of this one so if I was in their position there is no point pitting now you may as well firm it and try and go to the end but is there going to be a late late puncher or drama in the last lap of this Grand Prix because we've had that many times before and I'm just stumped Red Bull Ford and Albon tyre whisperers today. How they've done soft to medium, I'll never know if they pull this off. Meanwhile, we're fighting with Gasly now. He's cleared Sonoda, but we're not wanting to give up this position because I, I still remember what happened in qualifying. Gasly didn't get out of our way, so I'm trying to fight our teammate, but now, as soon as we get through back into P5, look how close Piastri is, and I realise, as much as I want to try and get the better of Gasly to get revenge for Saturday, I need to play the team teammate game. I need to try and block Piastri whilst trying to overtake Gasly because I want Gasly to still finish ahead of Piastri so we can score more points than McLaren. So, oh my god, Gasly weaving about, tries to defend Piastri. I've overtaken uh, our teammate to get back into P5. Piastri though has got Gasly. What can I do? Can I try and maybe defend very harshly against Piastri to try and give Gasly a chance to come back through for P6? Ideally, I want to. We're going to go defensive to the inside here and just roll the car a bit wide and we're going to take Piastri wide and Gasly gets down the inside. Don't ever say I'm not a good teammate because despite everything I'm still giving Gasly some benefit here and actually helping him out um, to try and get this P6 which would be much better for us versus Lawson to limit the damage but Fernando bloody Alonso is going to win a second race this season. He's going to win this Grand Prix with a one stop as Gasly comes in for the last minute dive He's hit us! Gasly's hit us and he's pushed us off wide! We're now side by side with Piastri. Gasly has become selfish on the last lap after all I did for that man just to get him in that position and he's made contact with me and pushed me off circuit and now Piastri's got me because obviously he's on softs. You know, I, all I had was track position but as soon as he was side by side with us, he overtook us absolutely. So... In the end of it, we come home P7. Gasly, what was that, man? What was that? I helped you out, even after the annoyance from Saturday, and you've thrown it back in my face. What the hell was that about? And that's it then for the Portuguese Grand Prix. And what a sensational victory they've managed to pull off here. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. 
If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. This is a massive win for Red Bull 4 to try and re-kickstart and re-energize their season after having a few too many squabbles with each other internally between Alonso and uh, Lando Norris. It's a 1-3 for them. I mean, all three of them, those two and Albon, I don't know how they've managed to do soft to medium uh, on a one stop here with the tyre well levels that we know, you know that we've seen from previous seasons but they've they've done it fair play to absolute tyre whisperers uh, Alonso wins his second race of the season uh, having won his home Grand Prix earlier in the season remember the Spanish Grand Prix and uh, that will be very good news for Red Bull to try and close back up in the constructors Liam Lawson does very well to be P4 the leader McLaren in, uh, up there Gasly P5 it should have been 5-6 and it should have been me ahead of Gasly uh, but I didn't even care about that. I, you know, Gasly could have got five and I could have got six, but he, he didn't even let that happen because he, when he overtook me, just dived it and blocked up and went straight into the side of me and pushed me wide. So it's a bit of a shame there. That's going to be an interesting one to debrief maybe with our teammate. But uh, it means we now are still leading, but we're level on points with Liam Lawson in the championship now. It's all rather close as we get towards the halfway point of the season. Five points back is Fernando Alonso. Nine points back is the reigning world champion, Oscar Piastri. And then a bit of a bigger gap to the likes of Lando Norris and Pierre Gassi, our teammate. But um, McLaren still lead the way. Still about 20 to 25 points ahead of us. So... That's really not letting up. There's not been a single race where we've really gained on McLaren because both of their drivers just keep on putting in those positions. So we're going to have to find another extra gear somehow to try and reel in McLaren for the constructors fight. But it's been a tougher race than I thought it would be at Portimao. Our car definitely didn't work as well as it did last season. And uh, our win streak comes to an end at three. I guess I had to at some point. I would have been very surprised to be honest if on the F1 game I won four races in a row but that was still a pretty damn entertaining episode a lot of action right at the end of it for sure guys if you have enjoyed it hit the like button let me know what you thought in the comments below and you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formal on content i'll see you guys next time goodbye